Hello, the left. Uh, it's Malcolm. Look, I thought we'd better have a chat, all with it being the 1st of May and all that. Um, look, I know some of you think I'm a traitor for joining the Green Party, but, uh, you know, I, I think the environment's very important and I am a massive hippie and... and Look, I'm not, I'm not really that political, to be honest. I'm far more into the music and running the calf. But uh, I did think it was important that we had a little chat because the anti-Semitism is getting out of hand. And, you know, look, I, I'm, I'm Jewish myself. I'm not very religious, but I do like to light candles at Hanukkah and, and dress up at Purim. Well, I like to dress up any time, but Purim's a good excuse. Um... And, and, and the thing is, look, there isn't a big conspiracy. There is no global Jewish capitalist conspiracy. If there was, I'd be a multi-millionaire record producer in, instead of having a, a small studio in the basement of my calf that's not quite big enough for a drum kit. Uh, and I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have a calf. I'd have an island in the Bahamas. And I wouldn't be talking to you on YouTube. I'd be talking to you on Sky News, you know. That, so, look... I, you're wrong. There isn't a conspiracy. Uh, trust me, I'd, I'd, I'd know about it. Um, but Israel, that seems to be the real flashpoint. And, and, and what... Look, I want to give you a bit of an analogy. Now, you know, my grandfather was a member of the Labour Party for a great many years. Um, and then one day, out of the blue, he announced that he was a syndicalist communist. Um, my uncle and my father, they, they didn't really know how to take that. So my uncle, he joined the Socialist Party of Great Britain um, uh, until he got kicked out and then joined the Socialist Study Group in, in Camden. Um, uh, uh, whereas my father became an anarcho-syndicalist and didn't join any political party because there wasn't one. And they really didn't get on. They argued for many, many years about many, many things with you know, my, ultimately my uncle following Marx and... My dad, following Bakunin, who was a terrible anti-Semite himself, but um, he, he did sort of think that he was right about a lot of stuff. Apart from that, obviously, he didn't like that at all, being Jewish himself. But look, you know, they, they were constantly arguing about things. Uh, direct action, my, my dad would say, direct action is the only way, although he never really got particularly actively involved in anything himself. He just sat in the calf talking to his anarcho-syndicalist mates about anarcho-syndicalism. Whereas my uncle would say direct action, uh, direct action is futile. Um, while actually getting very active in, in lots of demos and, and marches against things like the poll tax. Um, and they, they were constantly arguing. They had very different views on, on how you should um, solve the, you know, the peace problem in Israel, for example. My, my uncle used to say there should be no two-state solution, there should be a single state called Judeistein, and it would be a socialist state and everyone would live in harmony. And my dad would say, no, the state is irrelevant. Everyone should live in communes uh, and they would, they would live in peace and harmony in, in self-governing communes. Um, and I, you know, I, I, I followed my father's advice and I, I went out to Israel and I stayed on a kibbutz for a while and I had a lot of fun digging irrigation trenches in the desert and running the volunteers bar which was, uh, you know, good training for running the calf. And, you know, I had a good mate out there in Tel Aviv who was a musician, because I was a bit of a musician myself, not particularly successful, but he was a great guitarist. He had long hair, he looked a bit like Slash from Guns N' Roses. We used to sit around listening to Nirvana and going to raves. And I mean, at the time, everybody seemed to be quite lovey, you know, they seemed to love each other a lot, and there was a lot of talk about peace, which obviously never happened, which is a shame. Um, I tried to track him down a great, um, you know, a few, a few years later and I didn't have much luck. Eventually I found out he died in the army, which was a, a real shame. I think what a lot of people don't realise is, is the fear that there is um, on both sides. But, you know, the analogy, so the analogy, anyway, my, 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 my father and my uncle constantly arguing and, and, and you know, it, it was made a lot worse because all the people around them used to, you know, they used to say, well, Malcolm, you should listen to your father, he's right, your uncle's on completely the wrong track, or, 
Malcolm, you've got to stop listening to your father. He's wrong. Your uncle's right. And you couldn't have a family meal. You know, you'd be sitting down enjoying the chicken, talking about how long the roast potatoes have been in, in the oven. And then someone would say something like, reformism is a deviation. Impossibilism is the only way forward. Vanguardism is wrong. Uh, and then there'd be a huge argument and my uncle and my dad would be at each other's throats. And and it was years and years later, my uncle moved to Scotland and, and he got ill and my dad cycled up to Scotland to see him on a tricycle, hundreds of miles. And they, they sat down and they had a barbecue and a beer and they made up. But, you know, I did think to myself, if it hadn't been for all the people outside the family getting involved and kind of riling everything up, maybe they'd have, they'd have just sort of made up a lot earlier. So I suppose what I'm trying to say is, look, if, if you haven't got a vested interest, because, you know, my, both my uncle and my dad had a vested interest, and the one thing they did always used to say is, well, you know, at least, at least Israel's there if we need it. So if you haven't got a vested interest on either side and you haven't got a solution, God knows I haven't got one, perhaps you'd be better off just not saying anything. Mm.